44 stands for in the numeric sexual yeah, that's, code. Yeah, no, that's there. really loud. Yeah, that's good. In the what? Numeric sexual code. Perfect. Chloe sounds really quiet. No. Is numeric sexual code, what is that? Well, 69 is like oral sex. All right, okay. 44 is gay men. 77 is lesbian women. Why? Where do you find these things? Yeah, who came up with that? Okay, well, just Says think who? of how a four looks. This sounds made up. Okay. So look at the four. Look at this four. Yep. So this is the butt, and this is the penis. Mm. So we have two fours next to each other. The one you penis have a is good penis and a butt. butt. Uh-huh. So why I get it. the sevens? <laughs> well, because there's no penis. All right, I'm confused. Duh. This podcast started out. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty there's typical. Also, there's also gay hanky code, but we'll get into that later. We'll do a separate podcast mm-hmm. on that. Yeah. Um, this podcast is sponsored by K Man Coffee, Reebok. Yeah, and actually, <laughs> it's kind of by Reebok now. Uh, we're working on a partnership between Reebok and Black Iron Gym. And we're pretty excited. And the partnership started by everybody getting these fancy new lifters. Those of you who are watching can see they are the black and gold legacy lifter. And I actually lifted in them for the first time today. And I fucking love them. I love the really high heels. Also, we also got the gum bottom nanos. Nano what? What nano are we on now? Like 96. So we're on nano 96. (laughs) Do you have one too? I haven't worn a nano since the nano one. I'm barefoot. But I do love the nano whatever. I think they did a good job. I'm yeah, impressed. And it's stylish. I'm excited for whenever I get to touch a barbell in maybe like four months. That's exciting. I know. You'll get to use the shoes. It'll be crazy. Yeah, I mean, a couple people who had tried them on said the heel was a little high for them. Um, I haven't tried to weightlift in them yet, mostly because I'm really bad at weightlifting. Um, but I did squat them today, and I actually really liked them. And my squats, Keegan, actually looked good. It, the, a little bit of the elevated heel fixed that weird... Little thing, thing you were doing? I did. Yeah. yeah, it didn't do it at all today. How do you feel? Fine. About what? How do I feel about what? <laughs> you trained, and I feel like when you train, some days you feel great afterwards, some days um, you're hurt, and then some days you don't feel good. Well, so which is, which one of those three are I you? I actually have some really great news. This Uh-oh. is day two of no nausea. No way. I haven't taken a Zofran for 48 hours. I still don't feel great, and I'm tired and exhausted. For everyone that's listening, I don't think it's a secret by now that I have health stuff going on. I don't know what's going on yet. Once I do, I'll let everybody know. But yeah. So I feel okay. I didn't finish my workout though because we're doing this. We can finish it after. Yes. I still got a workout. I think Alex is down there right now. Um, so yeah, Reebok and Black Iron Gym have partnered up. I don't have a discount code or anything for you guys, but I can vouch and say that the Legacy Lifters, I'm very impressed. And I've been married to Nike my entire life, and I've never bought a pair of Reebok Lifters because mm-hmm. I just haven't cared for them. And all it took was getting them on my feet. And I might actually completely switch over from Nike. I just need to weight lift in them first. I'm excited to try them out. I think when, uh, I think Jared Fleming is going to be here mm-hmm. October 4th through that athlete camp. Yeah. Um, so I think he's going to help me out with some tips and some pointers on actually learning how to weight lift, which will be exciting. Yeah, so I'll wear him for that. Fun. I'm excited yeah. for him to come because I just want him to teach me how to weight lift, but I have to teach other people how to eat. So I might not get to learn shit. Well, he'll be here for a few days before and I think after. That's so we exciting. can. Uh, Use his time as needed since he's staying at my oh, house. We should do a YouTube video on him teaching me how to weightlift. That'd be yeah, hilarious. We could, that. we could do that. That's yeah. We can totally do that um, right after we I'll podcast see, with I'll him. See if he right. can magically uh, fix my shoulder. Maybe he can. Yeah. Um, this podcast we have discount codes for you from our other two sponsors: K Man Coffee, code Black Iron, Gnarly Nutrition, code Black Iron. Stock up on coffee, cold brew, protein powder, BCAAs, whatever you want. Use our code. Save yourself a discount. These are two companies I have been working with for many, many, many years, and I'm very loyal to them for no other reason other than they're great fucking people. Yeah, I am gnarly all the way. So all I'll use, it doesn't give me that weird blow or gas. Yeah, we talked about this last time. It's great. Yeah, I, I, I drink coffee a lot. Yeah. There's I have caffeine in coffee. this. It's protein and coffee and water. Sounds huh. delicious. This is actually a great segue. Me choosing to support Gnarly and came in Coffee is entirely due, they're great products, don't get me wrong, but entirely due to the, the people who own those brands. And I am one of those people who I like to support people more than I like to support brands. Um, 
donuts and deadlifts is not the best quality apparel you can buy, but I like to think we do really cool stuff and we give back and you're supporting a cause more than you're actually supporting a company and you're supporting, you know, me and my staff and our livelihood. And that's what this podcast is about today. We are going to talk about building a staff or building a team as a business. When you say not the best quality apparel, who are you comparing that to? Nike. Because I feel like within like the fitness space yeah. of small businesses, it's well, one of the better apparel companies. If you're gonna Agreed. compare, if you're gonna compare people who are printing on like screen printing T-shirts and selling them as their own, I think our quality control is better than any other company out there. Uh, yes. And I say that because we have Chloe. We look at every single fucking garment, every single one, and we make sure it is up to par with being sold. Like our quality controls there, but like what I'm saying is, is like yeah. I just wanted to yeah. clarify who yeah. you were comparing yourself to. So yeah. if somebody had never heard of Donuts and Deadlifts and listened to this, which probably wouldn't happen. But right. they're not like, oh, they just said their stuff's garbage, but we should buy yeah, it. Yeah, and our, st- our stuff's not garbage by not. any means, but it's we're we're screen printing on other people's garments still, not for long. Right. I haven't gone <laughs> in and hand sewn each item. Right. Hmm. Um, when and does again, that start? That's a re- tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> I bought Chloe a sewing machine. <laughs> a sewing kit? And every all of Donuts and Delos Apparel is handmade by Chloe and I in Reno now. Yes. Yeah. So. D&DL cut. Am I going to be in the way if I sit back? I'm scared to sit back. Just Why? Grab your, grab your mic. In the way of what? You too. So I actually have no. an interesting group of people here today. Ryface, who is my longest standing employee. Yeah, bitch. Ryface has... <laughs> Ryface <laughs> actually was my first employee and he's still here. Um, Ryface has been around for a long time and he's helped me, you know, build donuts and deadlifts and build Black Iron Gym. And it's been a ton of trial and error. And what I have come to find that with my businesses is they're most successful when we have a proper team and staff in place working together. And that's all it comes down to. And people constantly ask how I can have five businesses plus be trying to start a nonprofit plus my own side projects and how I can do it all. I can't do it all. I can do it all because I have 20 employees. Do we have 20? I can't math that quickly anymore. There's four. All right, well, don't talk until you find out what that number is. Okay, someone math while I talk. There's four of us here. I'm just kidding. And then we have Ben, Kyle, and technically Sarah now. Um, Desiree, Cortland, David, Caitlin, Alex, Kelsey, Ashley, Q. Is that it? I wasn't looking at how many times your hand Me flipped neither. over. Me neither, and I so. did this like six <laughs> times, so there's a handful of us. Yeah, like Cortland, too, technically. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cortland. Yeah. I so mean, like 15 to 20. 15, yeah, yeah. 20 or Ish. so. Oh, Maggie. Maggie. I mean, I don't really count Jenny because she's an independent contractor. I don't employ her. Maggie. Um, but, yeah, I mean, basically the reason all these companies can do what they can do is because of my staff. And a lot of the times people ask me what my end goal is. Like, why am I doing all this? Ben and I don't want kids. I have no interest in having children. And I think a lot of people know that. And like my goal is to create as many salary paying jobs for the people I care most about. And I do hire my friends and I will continue to hire my friends. Um, Chloe's face. (laughs) Chloe's face. She keeps saying we have to stop hiring your friends. Mm -hmm. But do you here? I'll let you explain why. And like, here's another thing. The reason Chloe runs my business is because my strengths are her weaknesses and and versa vice. uh, I knew you were going to say versa vice. Here we fucking go again. And vice versa. You're saying it wrong. Thank you. No, it's actually it's actually the exact meaning of it. It, Right. Uh, So (laughs) we did a whole (laughs) podcast. Well, it wasn't a whole podcast on this, but. I say vice versa. Uh, The thing about hiring friends, in my opinion, is, well, I mean, clearly I would not have this job if you didn't. (laughs) But the thing with hiring, you can use it. It's mine. (laughs) Uh, We share share toothpicks Um, (laughs) all the time. Um, (laughs) Back to what I was just going to go real gross, but I'm not going to. Here, the thing with hiring friends is there's always another chance. Almost. Yeah. There's almost always another chance. It's hard to draw the definitive line in the sand when it's friends because of the emotional connection. Right. I agree with that. For Christina, that emotional connection runs deeper than... 99.99999. Than with me. I can draw the line and stick to it pretty well, but I'm also more aggressive and more abrasive. 
You? Shut no. <laughs> Thank Chrissy. Chrissy loves second chances. I give everybody. I love all the chances. Mm-hmm. I know, and it's hard, and it's that's like another thing is everybody, with the exception of David, Caitlin, and Cortland, was a friend prior to working for me, mm-hmm. and now that of course. Cortland's one of my best friends and they're, they're friends now, but every single other person who's employed by me was a close friend or a sponsored athlete prior to working for me. Um, this is just how I am. I, I don't know why I am this way. I've always done it. I don't think I've ever hired somebody I didn't know. Hmm. Seriously. Like I've never, I don't think, oh wait, Ethan, but do, does Ethan count? Right, face. Uh, Ethan was an intern. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I've never had thing. anybody hand me a resume that I've reviewed and then I hired them. Like, it's literally me being like, we need another employee. Who should we ask? This is basically what it is. It's exactly what happens. And it's, I mean... It's, it's a good quality to have because you want to be able to help out your friends and provide them with income. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a bad quality... Right, and I just want to give this is this is my take. I know Keegan's just itching to say something, and so this is the last questions. thing I would say. My take is this: I want to reward somebody I know who deserves to be rewarded. And when I look at like people like Alex and Keegan, and I start becoming close friends with them, and I spend time with them, I'm like, wow, these are two fucking incredible people who deserve an awesome opportunity, and I want to give that to them. And that's where my head's at with with hiring my friends. When I see my friends or hear about my friends being like unhappy with their jobs or needing a change or this or that. Like all I want to do is just employ everybody. I mean, there has been times though, like people have asked. Keegan's been trying to ask me a question for like 10 minutes. You got to be more aggressive. Um, what a bitch. There is definitely times people have asked that have been in the friend circle or in the rings of the front, the outer rings of the friend circle. And when you didn't have the ability to employ anyone, you did say no. Mm-hmm. So I do applaud you for that. It's not like everyone makes it in. And yeah, this just is also true. Bankrupt us trying to. <laughs> I guess I wasn't really going to ask a question as much as, so I've looked at resumes before I've had to hire people in other jobs and I can see where it's kind of scary to like hire people. You have no idea who they are, like what their visions are, if they believe in your brand, if they don't believe in your brand. So I can mm-hmm. see we're hiring friends that you know have bought into what you're doing. Right. Um, I don't want to say it's an easy approach. I think it's a good one as long as you kind of like weed out who you think right. like fits with your vision for actually working for you. Absolutely. Um, but do you think as deadlifts and donuts, or donuts and deadlifts, sorry, Same I say thing. that all the time. You're um, fired. <laughs> Bye, bye, Keegan. Shit. This was Keegan's <laughs> last podcast. <laughs> I'm all done giving second chances. As that's not true. I know. I'm kidding. As donuts and deadlifts grows with you guys screen printing now and doing everything, do you think you'll have to start employing people yeah. with, that have specialties in the things that you're trying to do? Well, interestingly enough, um, ooh, do I say names or do I not say names? No, don't I don't. I names. would say don't say because I don't know what you're going to say. Okay. Um, She's going to say the name at some point. Upon well, I'm going to say the person we hired and the two people listening to this who um, weren't the people we mm-hmm. hired are going to know what happened and this is what happened. I'm just going to say their fucking names because they're my friends I knew it. and I love the shit out of them and this is just how I am. When Donuts and Deadlifts moved into a new building and we acquired multiple other businesses who we're now screen printing and fulfilling for, Chloe's job went straight to managing all of these other accounts for mm-hmm. us. And Chloe no longer has time to do donuts and deadlifts. So at that point in time, it wasn't as much work as we thought it was going to be. So I talked to two of my close friends, Kelly and Bonnie, and I said, look, we're going to need an assistant GM to help close soon. This is before I knew that close job was going to be like, literally she couldn't do it anymore. And I talked to both of them. And at that point in time, like they're two people who I know work hard, who I love the shit out of, who have always supported my brand and me and everything I've ever done. And they're good fucking people. So I talked to both of them about working for donuts and deadlifts. And this is what happened. We need to replace Chloe because of everything Chloe's doing. We need an entire new GM and someone to manage a million dollar company. Somebody who has experience with social media, with marketing, with business, with analytics, all that stuff. And Kelly and Bonnie are great and they're very smart and I love the shit out of them, but that's, they don't have that. 
And it was just, it would have been really bad to hand over that big of a role to people that have no experience. And like, and again, like I don't get hung up on college degrees. I don't give a shit. Yeah, that doesn't matter because I don't have one. Right, Chloe doesn't have one. And Chloe's a goddamn businesswoman. And it, I don't get hung up on the college degrees. But for this specific job and for what we need for Donuts and Deadlifts general manager and with how huge of a workload it is, it just, it wasn't right for either of them. And I told Chloe, we need somebody, you know, with a degree and a background in this and somebody who has a current career like in this area. Yeah. And that's why we gave it to Sarah. And it has nothing, you know, and that's just, and that was really hard for me having to like, you know, to explain to Bonnie and Kelly why it's not the right time yet. And like, yeah, in the future, if we need an assistant GM, they'd be great for that position. But with what we need and like, I, that's just something I, a decision I had to make. Yeah. And I think it's also not fair to them if they come out here and you throw like this crazy that's workload just them that, that they're not and ready for. The it. other yeah. thing, that's what I, Bonnie and Kelly, especially fucking Bonnie are very competitive athletes who train for three or four hours a day. Right. Bonnie's one of the best in the, in the country. And she, that's what she does right now. You guys all heard the podcast with her. She's in, you know, no position right now to take on something like that. And it would have been selfish of me to give that burden to one of them, knowing that they either, they, it would sacrifice their lifting and their training, which is literally a huge part of both those girls' lives, or it would completely overwhelm them to the point of making them feel like they failed. And that wasn't fair to do to them. Yeah. And it's not fair to do to either of you either. Right. Because then that's something you'd have to pick up the slack or... Mm -hmm it would stress your friendship with them right. or, you know, a million other things but that could go wrong for, we've just dealt with enough people that put training ahead of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Um, that, that, you know, we probably would be further along if that wasn't the case. Absolutely. And that, that's, that's the other thing about working for me is like job needs to be your priority. And above, you know, and I think that everyone who works for me, that's at, at least currently, that's the yeah. case. I mean, I, everybody who works for me is competitive in something. We all are. And that's fine. And I let, I let people train on the clock. Everybody's allowed to do as they please. I don't set people's schedules. They all come to work when they fucking want to and leave when they want to. Literally anyone who is on salary for me, I don't dictate their schedule. They show up to work and they leave when their work's done for the day. And that's how, that's how I roll. I don't set schedules. Here's how much money you're making. Get all the fucking work done. Make me proud. That's, that's how I manage my businesses. And then I set the schedules. <laughs> <laughs> so I got distracted because Maya and Axel ran up here and tried to bombard through the door and Cortland was just trying to corral them and it was pretty funny. It was funny. pretty cute. Oh, Cortland. It was pretty cute. Uncle Cortland. But again, what, like to, to answer your question. So as the screen printing, for those of you that don't know, um, I invested a lot of money into screen printing equipment and we're now screen printing in house. We were having too many issues with printers. Chloe and I got fucking fed up and I said, all right, we're just going to invest a bunch of money into screen printing equipment and do it ourselves. I don't have anybody who works for me that's ever printed a fucking t-shirt in their life. Well, I guess Ben and Kyle have now. So that being said, have you guys printed t-shirts? Ben and Kyle printed all of them today. That's awesome. Yeah, they're doing great. I mean, Ben taught himself how to fucking screen print, but in the future, the next person we hire when we need help with screen printing is, is going to be printer. someone with experience and someone local. I'm not going to fucking relocate someone out here to work for, you know, to print t-shirts. You're going to get so many emails as soon as people listen. Oh, to we us. already get them. <laughs> we get them all the time. It's crazy how many people but, yeah. like, just want to work for us. But that's the other thing right now is like all the jobs I have available moving forward $10 an hour, you know, I don't, right, I can't yeah. like the salary careers done. Like that's, that's everything that's in place right now is like, I'm not, I can't hand out salary paying jobs for people that want to print t-shirts. So, so can we back up for a second? Yes. So about, um, the hiring the replacement for me, Chrissy had always said that it was going to, whoever it came down to, we were still going to do the interviews <clears throat> so that I could feel them out since I was going to be the one that was going to be working with them mainly. And when Sarah, Sarah sent me a video, cause I just asked her to send a video explaining something or to teach me something that I don't know or to let me in on something about part of her life. Yeah. And she sent this amazing video and what it came down to is also the ability to work with me, which is huge for hiring and somebody. And it's really hard to find someone that can work with Chloe. Because I am... <laughs> It's true, but when it comes to work, I am 
all business at work, you know, yeah. like, this is your job and I need you to do it. And there's a time restraint and you need to get it done. And I'm not going to say please and thank you all the time. Like if this is your job, this is what's expected of you. And there's not actually a lot of people in the world anymore that understand that. You know what I mean? People are just like soft. And if it's, if it's not a please or thank you or like a, a praise for every job done, then it's a problem. And that's just not how I operate. So part of hiring Sarah was knowing that she can handle that. Yeah. I think that's, that's interesting that you asked her to send you a video that like teach you something. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Like even if you kind of knew it or did know it, like at least you could see her skill set, the way she thought and kind of how you guys could work together. Yeah, she, I think that's really cool. She sent me a 10 minute video on something I had no idea about and I was blown away. I was like, okay, done. I like that. Yeah. And, um, and staffing donuts and deadlifts has been, so here's the thing with donuts and deadlifts. It was an accident. I didn't plan on an apparel company. I didn't plan on people thinking to think my stupid hashtag was cool. Like it was my stupid little thing I did at RAF that everyone made fun of me for. Mm. So as donuts and deadlifts started to grow, I panicked. I didn't know what I was doing. And it used to be me, Ryan, and Matthew Millions in, my, in our little apartment in Manhattan. And our shirts would come in and we'd fold and bag them. And then like, this was when we were like manually entering people's addresses because we didn't even know there was software to like, to, you know, we didn't even know ShipStation exists. And so like at first it was just, you know, me, Ryan, and Matthew. And then for a while it was just me and Ryan. And then I was like, it got to the point where we couldn't, we couldn't manage it. We couldn't keep it in my apartment anymore. And this is kind of where the, the long trail of hiring friends started. I hired a friend who moved across the country to run donuts and deadlifts. There was a lot of issues at first because I, you know, working with a friend and then I no longer was in control of the inventory because I was living in Manhattan and we had the inventory out in Jersey and I was going back and forth and that, you know, and then, um, I opened the gym and again, Everybody that worked for me was a friend. I, I was excited, you know, and I just wanted all friends, and I, I didn't think anything through. I literally just offered jobs to the first people who talked to me about them. And it didn't do shit for any of my businesses, like the no, no forethought. Whereas with Sarah, there was forethought. Right. If I would have just hired Bonnie or Kelly on a whim, like I used to do with people, it would have been a fucking disaster, especially. I would have been mad. I would have been frustrated. <laughs> yeah. No, but seriously. No, I know. I yeah, know. but. I'm I mean, laughing because I'm just envisioning you getting mad and frustrated <laughs> and what, what again, that would like, look like. Now I think about who I'm going to hire. Like, I know I'm probably for at least like more like higher paying jobs and stuff like that. Like, I'm probably always going to stick to the circle. Maybe. I don't know. I honestly don't well, know. It depends who on who what the job knows. is. Yeah, like, exactly. If there's nobody in your circle that has that skill set but you need that employee, then you have to go outside of the circle. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's gonna happen one day and it's gonna be weird, but I'm assuming that person and whoever those people be will just become, become part of the family too. I but then those mistakes you made when Donuts and Deadlifts was smaller helped you make this decision now, yeah, and right? So I mean, yeah, a lot of the, you know, the trials and tribulations and yeah. everything that you guys have gone through have gotten you to this point. And Honestly, I'm thankful I made all those mistakes early, you know, and right. I, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I didn't know how to run an apparel company. And then we moved the apparel company here. And then the person who was running it wanted one of her friends to be hired. And then I, you know, it got just like messier and messier and messier to the point where these people I were hiring, like didn't respect me as boss. Whereas now I think everyone that works for me, even though I'm friends with everybody, you guys all respect me. And yeah. the previous team I had, <laughs> the previous team I had, nobody respect me. I would make an input about my own gym that I am the sole owner of, and it would get shut down by three boys. And I'd be like, this is my fucking gym. And they'd be like, well, you don't know anything, you know? And that's how it was at the gym for a long time. And it, and it sucked. Is that why there's no boys here anymore? Mm hmm. I'm just kidding. There's plenty of us. <laughs> there's you, David and Cortland and right face. And ben, I mean, at least ben every ben once in a while. Yeah. The, the two Kyle doesn't the, count. He's only the, like 110 pounds. The half a person. Although Ben's getting down there too, so know, the, the two of them together count as one person. Back, damn it. I can't take subject. it back. I know. I'm you an insensitive person. Yeah. Good thing he doesn't listen to this podcast <laughs> ever. Um, the two women before me, though, did a fantastic job of laying out the groundwork. So when yeah. I came in, I was able just to kind of like get a lay of the land and then move forward. But so I was grateful for that. 
if you do own, I know a lot of people who listen to this, like there's a lot of small businesses out there, small apparel, like everyone's starting an apparel company right now. And like, all I can say is that you have to ask for help because I had a big old chip on my shoulder for the longest time. I wouldn't ask for help. I wanted to do everything myself. I, you know, and I didn't she think still I does. Need it. <laughs> it's still a problem. Um, I've gotten better at it though. I've got better at delegating, but, um, you have to have help if you want your business to thrive. And like, this is my favorite thing about Chloe and mine's dynamic where I am weak. She is strong. And I, I have a hard time being stern. I have a hard time saying no. I have a hard time being assertive. And these are all things that previously caused my business to suffer. I was giving away free shit to everybody. I, you know, it was, it was chaos. And then Chloe came in and, you know, Chloe can tell people no. And, Chloe, and like, that's, I think, why Donuts and Deadlifts has thrived so much in the past Here's year. Here's a little side note about free shit. <laughs> this was, all my questions had to pertain to this, so Here's let's let's like roll. a side note about free shit. If you are a person and you are contacting a business to ask for free shit for, like, let's say it's for donation purposes, mm -hmm. you probably should have bought stuff or have some kind of purchase history with that company. Oh, yeah. Because I check oh, when yeah. I get these emails. So if you Ooh, have, I have not... so much to say. If you have not made a purchase with me, I will not send you free stuff for your event. Period. That's... So when I have people DM me to tell me how much they love my brand and what can they do to be an athlete or ambassador and they just love donuts and deadlifts. But they don't have any apparel from you? No, well, then. so there's people who will, will be like, oh, I just love your brand. And then I, this is, I look it up and I see if they've bought stuff. We both do it. And if they haven't, I reply with like, oh, thanks so much for supporting, like supporting the brand. Just like keep posting pictures in your gear so we can gauge your engagement and see if you'd be a good fit. And guess what they never do? buy anything Those pictures yeah anything. because they don't have any apparel they're liars and that's what i don't understand why would you even want to be sponsored by a fucking company who you don't wear their shit sometimes i don't think people think that far ahead like they see your posts and they see you guys and like they follow you on social media and they like they probably do to some degree like love the content yeah and love what we do mm -hmm. but then they're asking for stuff and they've never bought any of it it's like okay like you're not that committed to us if yeah. And it's not about the money. Following the formula. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think it's about the money for you guys. It's about like the actual commitment to the brand. Right. I don't give a fuck about the money. All I care about is like that you do what you say you do and you walk the walk. And, and I can also tell if it's like a a copy and pasted email that they send out to, to like, like 30 other 40, companies. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And then I just don't even respond. I just delete it. Yeah. That's. I mean, I mean you only got so many hours in a day to do what's actually important and answering I don't have generic copy and pasted emails is not not on our list of things to do so as far as sponsorships then how do you guys approach that and how has that evolved over the years <sighs> Jesus fuck <laughs> me again wanting to sponsor all my friends no but it's hard it's a hard process it's not easy but to, to be fair people. like your friends in this industry like a lot of them are really good athletes or mm -hmm. have yeah. mm -hmm. a big following well, for coaching or nutrition or their own companies yeah and so like as far as like building an athlete team goes as you know owning a business that sponsors athletes I just always first of all they need to have the right look and the right look can mean a number of things, you know, it's we gotta not get like, Alex tattooed. Yeah, it's not, it, it has nothing to do with like how hot they are, anything, but you just, you have to have the right look and there is a look and I can't explain it, but there's certain people who I like someone who's super, super, super lean and ripped doesn't have the look. They just don't like in my opinion. And so, you know, like I like, I like sponsoring like bigger girls, like stronger girls, stuff like that. I mean, look at like Monet or Charity or Alex, like, you know, just strong built women. Like that's kind of like the, when I say the look, like you need to just look like you can just slam and jam some fucking barbells around. Slam and jam. Slam and jam. And, but again, like what Chloe said at first, I never sponsored friends and now it's, well, I mean, basically this is what, this is the process. We notice someone wearing donuts and deadlifts with a large Instagram following, whether they, you know, um, whether they got it in a subscription box or whether they bought it from us or it was a gift, like we notice those things. Mm -hmm. So we start following those people. And like, let's take Charity Whip, for example. I had never spoken to her. I didn't know much about her. All I knew is she's a super hot, super strong, super sweet girl with like a good size following and good engagement. 
So I started following her and like, we started talking about hiking and this and that. And like, I always feel people out. Like I have to semi get to know someone a little bit. I never just offer out a sponsorship. So with charity, I, you know, I did feel it out and I was like, wow, she's actually is really impressive and incredible. And then I offered it to her, like take Alex. When I offered it to Alex, wasn't that like the first time you guys were here? Uh, first I think or it, second? I think it was right before we moved here. I think it, was it was when you guys came time. to look yeah. at houses, but even still, I didn't just offer that up to Alex the first time. Oh, absolutely you know? not. And, and that first time we were here, I mean, we spent five days together. Yeah. We stayed at your house. Yeah. You took us on a majestic journey to Reno, or to Tahoe, I mean. And now you live here. Um, but again, like, I felt you guys out, and like, Alex didn't need to be one of my best fucking friends for right. me to ask it. I just had to, like, feel Alex out and get a vibe. And like, honestly, I didn't know much about Alex prior to the podcast. I knew she was just, I knew like her athletic history and that she had won regionals and gone to the games. And like, that's kind of like all I knew about her is that she was a really incredible, incredible athlete. Right. I had no idea what a fucking rad person she is. And like, that's, you know, even like you guys come out here and I was like, you should move here. But again, like the offer for you guys to move here isn't just like, oh, I just want to hang out with these cool people right. and be friends. Like you guys actually work your fucking asses off and like... This, like with how motivated you guys are to do things is it helps me be motivated and it helps Ryan to be motivated. And then we like get more shit done. And again, like mm -hmm. the reason I wanted to bring you guys on is because you like to work and you're motivated to work and your work is no stranger to you She's guys. So right. fucking tired of people being around here and being in the circle that contribute minimally and want maximum results from the minimal work. And I'm just so fucking over watching it happen again and again and again. Yeah. You guys I mean, are such I mean, a change yeah. to that. You know what I mean? Just all these. There's been a lot of people where like the job is just subsidizing their training. Right. It's a good way to put it. That, that's yeah. cool if you want to do that, but go somewhere else. Yeah. From here on this out, I'm not, not I'm not, I'm not going to deal with it anymore, you know? And, um, there's days where we work it's 12 just, hour days. Like, yeah, shit doesn't get done because like you're more concerned about your, personal ambitions and yeah. just like how the hell does that help us yeah like, yeah exactly and like well, i mean not to search for brownie like points do, right we now we do for you but you don't do for us like what what are you expecting and yeah. i also i also which this is one thing that is like could be a downfall for me but chrissy knows it and she tells people this i think before they even meet me <laughs> <laughs> there's always a disclaimer that I, you can just always tell how I feel about you because I'm very upfront about it. You know what I mean? Well, to be fair, I thought you hated me. Okay, but that's different. Arnold. At the no, Arnold, we were you, fuck it, we're busy. Yeah. <laughs> you would like you look would. at me and I'd say something to you and you just like turn around and go the other way. And you might not have even seen me or heard me, but I'd like there was a few times that I would that probably happened. like to go with that option. No, the second one, you didn't, didn't see me. You. I, I could see you because you're how gigantic. How many hot but... brownies did everybody eat? Oh, Jesus, I was also yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's to, to be point. fair, I was a little high for a couple of days. And that's Which is probably the only way to get only through way. the Arnold yeah. for the most part. But back to my point. Fuck, what was it? It was so good. It was you about me being derailed. You, me to having disclaiming. We're talking about you, you being a bitch. Yeah, but. <laughs> Everybody that works here currently is pretty goddamn ambitious. I should stop swearing. It's pretty ambitious. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, like, and not... And whatever our goals... <laughs> what? Keep talking. <laughs> and whatever our goals are, everyone is pretty ambitious, and I just don't think there is room anymore here in any of the businesses for freeloaders, social climbers, or just emotional drainers. Yeah, and we've had all of those things over the years. Yeah. Like, people come and go, and it... Yeah, that's the thing that we're, might, we might be overlooking is how many people have come and gone. You know, they get, like, too big for their britches, and they get <laughs> to think, like, well, none of this would happen without me, and... You're wrong. Let's be clear. 90,000 Instagram followers does not mean you're a good person or you're a quality person. Or that, you know. That means you're kind of hot. Thing. Right. Exactly. Or like, you know what? Like, I don't, uh, for me, I'm just really sick of people that think because they work out for four hours a day that they're hard workers. Well, that's what I was going to say. They're hard workers at social media. When I said before, I'm, I'm not searching for brownie points, but I mean, Alex works out three or four times or three or four hours a day. 
but then diligently gets her work done either before, after, or both. Well, some of the projects right. that like we are working on that we're not going to tell you guys about yet, but it's a secret. It's like I've already gotten the shit I need from her. Right. I'm like so not used to that. I'm like, oh fuck! Like now I got a plan. Brian's usually this. chasing everybody down for shit to get like the stuff. And like, it's just like man, like eventually, one of my prevailing theories is eventually <laughs> there's going to be a. Like in the what is it the diagnostic manual for psychology like specific to like CrossFit like a diagnosis where you're addicted to it. Yeah, there has to be. It, 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 yeah, because it just everybody falls into that trap. They start drinking the Kool Aid and they think, oh, like I got to do more, 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 and it just consumes every aspect of their life. And then, like, you know, you burn yourself out. Well, that's the, the lack of balance. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to accept that, like, well, maybe you're just not genetically gifted enough. Maybe, like, you know, maybe pull back a little bit. Because, like, what are you going to do after your CrossFit career? Well, it's the same with it's college sports, career. football, basketball. Everybody's just, I need to go to practice. I need to eat. I need to recover. And then... You don't make the NFL or you get hurt. Right. And then you're like, now what do I do? Cool, man. I got my like. Yeah. <laughs> like my general studies degree. Right. Yeah. And the, and those are the people if that. that I mean, like, because yeah. I, I wouldn't want. I, I was. Yeah. If you even have a degree. Yeah. Because I, I was one and done. Yeah. You know. So like, and that's like professional level people. Like they get. Paid. You're saying CrossFitters aren't professional <sighs> level people. Uh, not until you are paid. It's fake sports. You, not until you are paid. We, we shouldn't by start that argument right now. No, no. Right. Like, you're no, not. I agree. Yeah, I agree. That's I was definitely just, another. Like podcast. the NFL, just egging you NHL, on right now. MLB, MLS, like all all of those sports are real sports because the the institution pays them. Mm -hmm. It's right. not, they're not surviving That's an interesting way to put it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I wouldn't even call, like you get some shit for this, but UFC doesn't pay their fighters, they pay their winners. WWE doesn't pay. They're all independent contractors. Yeah. Did you know so that? it's all a scam. I didn't know that. Yep. But yeah, it's just like, cool man, so like what are you going to do? Like you're not building anything, you're not thinking about what's next. So you know what happens when you blow out your knee, you blow out your shoulder. You real like you come to the realization after a decade that like, well, probably not going to be rich froning now. Yeah. Um, and you're probably not going to be rich that, anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get I it. I get it. <laughs> Zing. Got more of that came from. Yeah. It's just like, it's, it's, it's been frustrating because it's like, uh, I think part of the reason uh, that I've lasted is because I don't have like these weird athletic ambitions and I'm like I don't care about it that much and it doesn't consume my life and, and to and be so, fair like to go back to Alex or anybody else that's in the gym right now like you can do that and hey. still work yeah, like absolutely. you kind of have to find like it, the it good formula me, to like, make that yeah, happen it, it like that's struck not me with Alex that like uh, hey man she didn't she went to regionals and just like didn't put too much emphasis on it and just like had other facets of her life she could focus on. And She'll be here. really mad at you for not Let's, mentioning she went to the games. Yeah, that's why I said regionals. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then went to the games. <laughs> yeah, the but CrossFit games. The thing about Alex though is like she doesn't think of herself as like some diva athlete like mm -hmm. a lot of these like well-known crossfitters do like alex likes to fucking work and she works hard and like that's her life is working and she just fits at being an athlete into her career and her job right that's which I is how it should be from the, the amount that i know her i think she prioritizes correctly right yes which a lot of people have a problem doing so like if if you look in your your email inbox and you, like take me for example if I open my fucking inbox and my emails are slammed I'm not training fuck training I don't give a fuck I'm and I'm working and answering to my clients and I'm doing everything I can to continue to grow all of my businesses if my inbox is full I'm not training period and too many people prioritize too many people who have worked for me have not given a fuck about work and all they want to do is train and I I'm not doing it anymore. Like just I'm ruminating on the training, just like eat, eat, breathe, sleep. CrossFit. CrossFit. And it's sad. It's really sad. 
powerlifting. Well, to be fair, I'm happy all of this has happened because if it didn't, I wouldn't be here. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know it all needed to happen. And like, it sucks because I mean, the gym doesn't, the gym doesn't turn a profit. All the money that the gym makes goes right back into the, like who works here or the equipment. You know, the gym doesn't make money ever. If there's leftover money for the gym, we buy something cool with it. Like the, the, the goal with the gym has never been like get rich and make money. And I think a lot of people hear like, Oh, you know, people hear that I own a gym and see my car and they assume I'm just fucking rolling in the dough from the gym. It's like, I'm rolling in dough from investments I made when I, when I used to be rich, when I was 25 (laughs) and now I'm not anymore. And thankfully I was smart with my money. But it's like, oh, like owning a bunch of businesses, it, like the like if you it want, doesn't them, make you have more money. No, it doesn't. And I and I, t- I had it a makes phone. you have more work. Yeah, it, it makes, makes you, you have more you, work, and you're having to turn out more money. And then you have to hire people. So this is what's happened. I've talked about you know how much I used to make on podcasts before. Ryface and I sold millions of dollars in eBooks living in New York City, and. We made a lot of money and we lived in a $6,000 a month apartment and we got to do whatever we wanted and we didn't have to go to work and like, they sure did, you know, and we, we had, but we had fun, but we still worked really hard. Like Ryan and I still worked really hard. We worked our asses off. uh, I stayed up for 30 hours straight to finish FD 2.0. You must have smelled terrible. (laughs) I took a shower. And then <laughs> you were just in to, Pittsburgh, just, just actually, to wake up. Yeah, right? Yeah, Weren't but, you in but, Pittsburgh? Yeah, but I had, I had pulled like a whole stint, and I was, you know, that's what. Like yeah, that's. I'm not. None of that. Like, I'm not doing. I, that I do think there anything. is like the misconception that people that are rich, like it was easy. No, it wasn't easy. I was really broke, and when I moved to New York, I didn't even have any money to buy a bed. I slept on the floor of my apartment. I didn't. I couldn't even buy a shower curtain or pots and pans or anything. I had no money. We should like a YouTube series, like behind the scenes. Yeah, and it's so everybody sees like all be, the other shit that happens. Rich, go and go into finance, right? Or just keep selling eBooks. But this is what happened. There's no overhead cost with Ryan and I writing eBooks. It was a shitload of work. We stayed up all night, all day. We would, you know, and then we would, Ryan and I worked our asses off when we lived in New York, but there was no overhead at the, at that point in time, you know, and then we start donuts and deadlifts and I'm like, shit, I need to hire someone to help with this. And then we move donuts and deadlifts and do a bigger space and I need more help. And then I open the gym and the gym costs money. And, you know, for the first year the gym was open, I was putting 10 grand a month of my own money into the gym's checking account just to make ends meet because the gym made no money. And that's like, that's what I've had to do. Like I have 20 fucking employees. Like the days of making a million dollars a year are probably gone for me. And that's fine because I'm fucking happy and I don't need a million dollars a year. And I look around and I see, I'm going to cry. I see all the people who I love more than anything. Like literally like my best friends. I see Ryan and Chloe and Keegan and Alex and Q and Des, like my best friends, like everybody's happy and everybody likes coming to work and everybody's smiling and we all get to train and we all get to do stuff and none of us are loaded rich and that's okay. Cause like we all get to have each other and we all love what we fucking do and we all get to do it together every single day. And I couldn't ever possibly ask for more. Like this is what I've always wanted. I've never wanted a million dollars in my bank account. I've never wanted three sports cars. Like all I've ever wanted is for the people I care most about to be happy. So <laughs> <It's true>. transition. <laughs> and Sorry, I went full Chrissy on everybody. So as much as like everything you've done from like the point of inception for donuts and deadlifts to now has like created this team, what would young younger Chrissy do differently if she started over? Nothing. That's a weird question. Never asked that. Why is that a weird question? That's like a regret question. On no, I don't. I don't, I don't think, think it's a regret. Like, what have you learned? Like. I don't learn everything we were supposed to learn it. I would honestly, I wish I would have never worked from home. That's it. And I wish that I all those I wish I would have like gotten Ryan and I like workspace because there was no homework line ever. Ryan and I had a three bedroom apartment in Manhattan. We lived upstairs and our office was downstairs, but we were never able to separate work from home. And I, th- I yeah, think it's never fully one or the other. Right. right. And obviously that's still the case with me. I've been better. I've been getting here at seven or eight in the morning. I don't even open my laptop at home. I wake up, I fucking come straight to work. And like my mindset's been better this week. Cause that no, was, I'm really excited about having an office so I can come like I yeah. started doing the transition to doing the same things. Right. Um, Cause yeah, when you're like, Oh, there's like my office is my couch or yeah. you can see your living room from where you're working. Like when right. you are trying to relax, it's never, 
It's never really yeah. relaxing. I wish I dev- if I if I could change anything. I wish I would have uh, not worked from home for so many years because it definitely makes you feel like you're never off, and that's hard, especially when you have like a ton of employees and a ton like because on top of having twenty employees, I have 150 gym members, and you know I have 12 sponsored athletes. Like it goes just beyond my staff. Like the team is also the members at this gym. Like the team that makes up Black Iron Gym, there's the staff and then there's the gym. And with that staff comes 150 members. And then, you know, donuts and deadlifts, 2,500, 3,000 orders a month, like customers. And like, you know, it kind of like goes beyond just like who I actually give money to. But um, working from home is definitely something that's caused a lot of mental problems and a lot of anguish in my relationships over the year. You know, Ben's never said a word, never said a fucking word. And it's amazing and it's great. And honestly, since I've been with him, cause I actually really like him, I've been like intentionally trying to be better, but the past two, it. the past two, rela- <laughs> <laughs> I do. I hate it when she works at home. And oh, I thought you were going to say no. that she was trying to be better. No, I hate it. <laughs> and on, like, just to give everybody an idea of how much I work from home, I wake up at, you guys have seen my Insta stories. I wake up at five or six and I immediately get on my computer for three hours at home in the morning. And then I come to the gym and or donuts and deadlifts and I get everything done there. And then when I get home, I usually on my laptop till 10 p.m. answering emails. Yeah, I hate it. And yeah, Ben hates it too. He just doesn't say anything because he knows that. I hate it when, I mean, I do it too. And so does Alex. And we both kind of get on each other's case when it's like, why didn't you plan your day better? Or if like an email comes in at 8 p.m., you can answer it tomorrow and it's going to be okay. I read emails when I get home, but I usually don't engage. See, I couldn't do that. I just have to like, I have to just shut it down. I actually like go back and forth, but I'll read them just because I'll see it come up on the screen sometimes. Yeah, I couldn't do that. Yeah, so I'm trying really hard not to do that anymore, but with the way things are right now, just with how much we have going on, but last night I didn't even open my computer when I got home, and it was really nice. Cause and, we, you, and you still have businesses today. Yes. Crazy, mm-hmm. right? And again, like I work too much. It's been a problem since I started all this, and it's something people have repeatedly told me it's a problem, but I think if I could, if I could go back and change anything, I think that... I would change how much I, I would have like gone. I would have gotten myself a little office space or, a, you know, multiple times over. Cause I think I have gotten, when I get burnout, which doesn't happen any, have you, when was the last time I got burnout with working? It hasn't happened since you've been here. I don't think, I think it happened right before you got here. I just didn't show up to the gym for like a month. I come yeah, here for like two hours and that. yeah. And, uh, you know, and that like it causes those burnouts, which causes has caused my business to suffer. Because the second I check out and stop giving a fuck, which thankfully is a habit of the past, I now care again. A year and a half ago, different story, but um, it would have prevented all those burnouts and stuff like that. I think we also have a good support system around you now too to yeah. be like, hey, close your computer, right? Don't go to the gym today. Yeah. You know. And the other thing that's really nice now, and like again, like this pairs with health problems, like currently it's health problems, but um, a year and a half ago or a little more at this time, it was severe depression. And um, when I didn't want to come to the gym, my employees would just talk shit about me behind my back, all of them, all of them. And I would, you know, someone would tell me later, or it would be like, well, and it's, it, it just sucked. Whereas now, if I don't show up here one day, None of you question it. You know it's for a good reason. Or we text or call you and be like, what's wrong? Yeah, exactly. And then I talk to you guys and like, that's the other thing. I could probably leave for a year right now. I could fucking pack up my bags, leave for a year and not talk to any of you. And I could come back and everything would be fine. I really mm-hmm. like, I, I know that. I know for a fact that could be the case. I mean, obviously without, you know, like there's, there's things that I do that are specifically me, whether it's apparel designer, you know, Instagram captions or Instagram posts like this, like it's, it's, it's my Instagram posts that have like fueled donuts and deadlifts, you know, or like just my way with words or this or that or whatever it is. And like, obviously those little things that are very me, it, they would change, but they wouldn't go away. But the fact yeah. that the fact that I feel like I could just fucking leave right now and not talk to anybody and come back here in months and everything would be fine. It like says a lot about the staff I have in place. Yeah. I, I mean, and I've said this from the beginning, I've said this before I worked for you you are the business owner. What you choose to do with your time is your business. If that has a negative effect on your business, then you will 
definitely deal with those consequences. Mm -hmm. But that's your choice as a business owner. No one can tell you what you are doing is right or wrong. Yeah. It's your choice. I am also comfortable in my position where I will make whatever decisions need to be made. Yeah. But again, that's, you know, that comes down to like, again, with building a team, I can't employ people that are needy. I just can't. I don't have the time. I don't, or people that question everything they do. Like I need confident leaders and decision makers working for me. And that's what I have. You know, everybody, everybody's pretty self-sufficient. Everybody knows what they need to do and they get shit done. And mm -hmm. it's, we have like a really good groove going with things right now. I agree. Cosign. Totally. What do you think, Ryface? <laughs> I thought you were sleeping. Sorry. Man, a few words. <laughs> I've been watching Keaton sleep. Keaton's sitting here falling asleep. It's really cute. He's not missing out on uh, Axel and Maya playing at all. Are they Are they downstairs? Yeah, they are downstairs. Oh, I don't they know. are? Yeah. Oh. Axel, too? I'm looking at two LaChance sisters right now. They're pointing and laughing at us, and I don't know why. <laughs> Great content. <laughs> I mean, I just got a bunch of asses in the video, so you're right? welcome. Yeah. Um, well, do you guys have anything to add? So, getting back to the sponsorship thing, yeah. Um, <laughs> since we said what not to do, um, I know you guys aren't really looking for any athletes at the moment. Um, but we are. But maybe you are. We're looking for male athletes uh, <clears throat> and diversity. But like, say somebody wanted to be an athlete, what would the appropriate way to go about doing it be? Um, I've never sponsored anybody that's asked me for it. What's happening? Sit down. I've never sponsored anybody that's asked me for a sponsorship. So honestly, I'm not really sure because for me, it's something I offer. And it's like, it's funny. I'd make the joke about like when I propose, when I pop the question, cause I get nervous when I ask people. You know, it's mm -hmm. when I asked Monet, I was so nervous. I remember when you asked Alex. Yeah, I get really weird and nervous. Because I could nervous. say no. Yeah, and then it's weird, and then it's awkward. And like, for, so for me, it's like it comes down to people who wear my brand. I don't care too much about huge social media followings. It helps, but I go and I look at people's likes and comments, and I see if they comment back to their their followers. If you don't fucking take the time to respond to your followers on Instagram, you sh like, come on, like, come Not on. That cool. Right. And like you have the, f you, I know everybody has the free time, like write people back, respond to questions, say thank you. Like that shows me a lot about who you are as a person. And if you can't even take the time to reply to the people that look up to you and that want to learn from you, you're never going to be a donuts and deadlifts fucking athlete I mean, ever. And your, your views have to align with our views as oh, well. Oh yeah. Like. I, this, I tweeted something the other day that a lot of people got mad about. I told people, if you ever want to work for me, you can't be into Donald Trump or horoscopes. I love horoscopes, so she's a liar. <laughs> Do you love you, horoscopes you for what they are? Do you actually like believe them? I mean, they're very entertaining. Right. Okay. So you understand that they're fucking horse shit. Or do you, Oh, boy. All right, I'm going to change the subject. We just broke up. No, yeah. I'm they're entertaining. Change, I'm they're, inter they're entertaining. I'm going to change the subject. But anyways, like... If you voted for president for for Donald Trump, I don't even fucking like saying the word president in front of his name. That's okay. I'm okay with that. You can have your you view. can have your views. If that's you fine. don't like gay people, that's okay. You can have that view, but you can't be fucking hateful toward them. So, all that being said, if somebody who worked for me voted for Trump, great. If you came in here as a fucking hardcore you know, Trump supporter wearing a make America great again hats and you were constantly talking about politics. It just is not going to fucking work period. Yeah. Um, and again, like everyone's entitled to their beliefs. What I'm not okay with is anyone trying to shove those beliefs down anyone else's throat or anybody being hateful. Now people can argue that I'm hateful towards Donald Trump, which I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of it. <laughs> okay. So one, don't slide into the donuts and deadlifts DM, DM looking for a sponsorship. Right. Two, Bye. be engaged in the donuts and deadlifts community along with don't be a fucking asshole. Mm -hmm. Be open minded. Mm -hmm. um, be accepting of others and people around you. Right. And maybe you have a chance at being a sponsored athlete. That's basically it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think would those say are pretty so. good criteria. And, like, you know, we're going to roll out officially our ambassador program and kind of make it fun for people to apply to be an ambassador. 
Yeah, we're gonna oh, take cool. we're gonna take applications for ambassadors. Hopefully, so video applications. Yes, it's gonna be video yes. interaction. It's gonna be fun. So listen for that. I'm um, volunteering my time right now to watch those. Okay, oh, that'll be fun. But can you just peep just care more about your workouts than your social media following. Can I say yeah. one more thing to anyone that's listening? If you're a consumer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you are an e-commerce consumer, which means if you order stuff off of the internet. <laughs> who does that? How you order, just how you order our products. <laughs> You also return things the same way. You go to that business's website, you look for the tab that says returns and exchanges, and you follow the very clear directions that many, many, many companies lay out for you on how to return or exchange items. That's too please, hard. Please, please, please. But people don't wait, email so you're... customer service. Okay, now wait, 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 wait. <laughs> No, that's too you, hard. You, <laughs> so that's a lot now, of steps. No, 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 no. Wait, I think I know why people, f why, why we get, look at who's at the head of the company. It's me and you. You have a lot of fucking fans. People love the shit out of you. People know that if they email, there's a slight chance they might get to talk to one of us. And I'm starting to think that's why people do it. Do you think? I think that's why. I never would have thought of I that. I think people are lazy. I think you're also right. But I think people are lazy. And instead of doing 30 so seconds they, of research, they'd they rather just send an email. Take a minute to send an email. And then I, wait. And then wait for a reply. Yes. It's ridiculous. It's just I, weird. I, I think people are lazy. I do too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. like they, they want too. Chloe to it, do it for them. They it want her to go to their house, myself. pack up the stuff they don't want, put it in the mail, ship it to herself. <laughs> but I think that the building a good team is done by trial and error. Yeah, definitely. And again, like and you have to be able to weed out the errors and you have to be self-aware. You, I know my weaknesses. I know them. And I hire people who are, especially like in leadership roles, like, you know, being at the head of the gym or the head of Donuts and Deadlifts, I want people who are nothing like me mm -hmm. because I know my flaws and my flaws cost the company money. Oh. Being too nice repeatedly has cost the company money. <laughs> you can't argue with it. Just, just no, agree with I it. I can't argue with it. No, and it's, no, no. Know? But I mean, you know what? It was the, it was the growing pains. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was like the emotional growing pains, which became a little bit of financial growing pains. But now we're just in like expanding growing pains. So it's yeah. fantastic. And I think a lot of companies like yours have gone through similar things where you want to get your name out there. You want to be nice to everybody. And you just give, give, give. Get and people after that want to wet their beak. <laughs> <laughs> wet their beak. <laughs> and then after a while, it's like that's got to stop and you're not sure how to do it. And right. then you hire Chloe. Yeah. Wet their beak. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> It made me think of an octopus. I haven't heard that term what? in so long. I don't know why I think it's so funny. Oh, oh, oh I can't wet my beak. <laughs> um, and, and I don't also, dislike everyone. Also, the whole point of starting a business isn't to make money. It's to do something. Right. Yeah, it's and to grow provide a, business. a service. And, and, and making money is a consequence of you running a good business. I and see, you I see have a lot to of that like, like on social media. They're like, I want to start a business. <laughs> Okay. Oh, like, okay. Cool. And I don't think I don't cool. think people understand. What do you want to do? I don't know. Cool, man. Small business owners are like fucking demigods in America. So like, I don't oh blame you. But I mean, are like, we even gotta... a small business anymore? Yeah. Yeah. And we're not a medium. Well, <laughs> we're we're not it's, publicly it's traded. More than we're still... I think one or two hundred people is considered like not medium. no longer a small business. Um, and we're still an LLC. We're not like an S corp or a J corp. I think corp. people get confused because they don't also understand what it means to run a business or how much it costs to run a business or what co what there are what the costs are. Yeah, to there's run this a thing business. called fucking overhead, and it sucks. The, most businesses that are successful have a lot of overhead. <laughs> Like us. Yeah. I mean, we don't profit a lot because it costs a lot to run the business. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, being no, I agree. vertically integrated helps with that. I really so. like it when you use fancy terms. <laughs> say We're it again. You just brought me can back you, to college and you, like looking at slide you, projectors. Can you say it again a little slower and sexier? Vertically integrated. That wasn't sexy, though. It was just slower. It's enunciated. I'm sure it was sexy to somebody. <laughs> Vertically integrated. So, which, yes. yeah, which means we Stop. cut out middlemen, basically. Mm -hmm. So we're in charge of all that. That's what we're doing. 
All right. So that's all we got about team building and staff and all that stuff. I think I what I've come to find is a lot of other people who own small businesses listen to this podcast. Uh, and I just wanted to hopefully provide some insight for what goes into running the gym and donuts and deadlifts and the people involved. I, now, my, 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 th- my theory is that if you're obsessed with calling yourself an entrepreneur, you're probably not going to be a good business owner. Oh, and I got one more thing to say. <laughs> Damn it, right face. If you're selling other people's shit, you're not a fucking entrepreneur. <laughs> so all these Fitzbo girls who are like, ah, entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur. No, you're hucking PE science and fucking Gymshark. You're not an entrepreneur. If you have your own business, then you are an entrepreneur. If you are making a shitload of money, a shitload of money selling other people's stuff, you're not an entrepreneur. That's all I got. Mm, I'm really, a, I'm the really, end. That's just a product pusher. Yeah, exactly. Basically, so we'll, back in the olden days when the guy would never, stand on the corner well, yeah, with I his mean, medicines, I mean, it's the hey, same man, thing. We'll, like, there are, there's no shortage of people that want to get uh, like strictly out of vanity to get Dimes to make other people dollars. Yep. And that's that's the funny thing about it. We're a little over an hour. All right. All right. Thanks for listening. Um, hey guys, real quick, please follow the gym and myself on YouTube, Black Iron Gym, Crazy Make Agony. We're gonna actually start doing a lot with the gym YouTube. And I've got my YouTube channel up. Uh, follow all of us on Instagram, Keegan Dillon, Chloe Johnson, um, follow the gym on Instagram. Uh, the more you guys help and comment and like and give us feedback, the more we can continue to give you guys really awesome content. And we want to give you guys what you guys want. So make suggestions. Leave a comment on this podcast. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Tweet topics at me, stuff like that. We're, but we're all in a position right now to hopefully be able to podcast once or twice a week, hopefully <laughs> twice, maybe even three times here and there. Don't get um, crazy, we got a girl. Good guests lined up too. Yeah, we do have a couple of good guests lined up. So please, 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 you know, leave a review, give us five stars, tweet topics at me, suggest guests. We want your feedback. Very Thanks. excited. Bye. 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 Toodaloo.